Hello everyone, yes it's me with the pint of tea. Hello everybody, yes it's me with the pint of tea. Um, I was on eBay the other day, I found a ZX81. I remember as a kid, lots of people had these things. I never had one, so I thought it'd be quite cool to have a play around with it. Now this particular ZX81 that I found was marked up as faulty and untested. So I'm not sure how they knew it was faulty. If you were to perhaps want to go ahead and buy a ZX81, you may also stumble across the problems that I came across here. So follow me on my journey with the ZX81 here and see what kind of trials and tribulations I had. It all worked out well in the end. So the first part of the mission was to find a nine volt power supply, DC, that had an eighth inch jack on it or two and a half millimeters for those that are metric so i started digging through my box of many power supplies and eventually came across this beastie it's a little switch mode adjustable power supply that gives you the ability to be able to change out the end connector so the one thing that i was nervous of uh, on the zx81 most of the ports on the side of this thing are all the same size which means that it could be really easy for you to accidentally plug the wrong plug into the wrong hole so please be careful where you poke your plug so the next part of the mission was to find ourselves a phono mail to uhf tv mail or tv cable as we used to call them back in the day thankfully my recent exploits with the acorn electron meant that i had one of these kicking around so i went ahead and plugged the uh, ZX81 into the telly at which point we powered it all up and we had a little tinker with it and uh, as you can see we got some uh, we got some noise out of it but we weren't actually getting a, a, a signal out of it none of the channels were showing anything so at this point it was time to pull the little blighter apart I noted that it only had two screws on the bottom of it so I guess the rest of them were hiding underneath the little rubber pads. So without further ado, I got my screwdriver out after having removed all of the little pads there and popped out all of the screws. I then carefully removed the bottom of the unit, which exposed the PCB with yet another two screws in it. So upon popping those screws out, I was then able to release the PCB. Now, I was aware that that PCB was connected to the keyboard via some kind of ribbon cable, and this is all hidden underneath the PCB. So when you do lift off the PCB, please be careful. You might easily fracture or damage that ribbon cable. Those plastics tend to get quite brittle as they get older. So looking over the PCB, here we have the UHF modulator. And what we've got here then is the uh, input, output, and power supply sockets. Then here is the Ferranti ULA. This here is the Sinclair Research ROM. We've got the Zilog Z80 Central Processing Unit. And then the RAM is located over here. Oh, by the way, that's the uh, 7805 5V uh, regulator. And then down at the bottom here, We've got a little uh, expansion port where we can add some more memory and various other little bits and pieces to it. So this computer was released in March in 1981 for a price of about £50 for a kit. They stopped production of this unit after about three years. So as far as specifications then, the Z80 on this machine uh, runs at about 3.25 megahertz. It's got one kilobyte of memory and uh, the graphics can output uh, 24 lines of 32 characters or 64 by 48 pixels and as noted before it's 9 volts DC to drive it. This was introduced as a budget family computer so this was used to encourage uh, families to get into the world of computing. 
The precursors to this computer were the Mark 14 and also the ZX80. In fact, the Mark 14 I've got, uh, if you uh, click the link that's just about to pop up, hopefully you should be able to watch a video on the Mark 14. In fact, we might need to go ahead and fix that Mark 14 at some point in the near future. So, having established that the 7805 voltage regulator was working okay, I then got in and gave that little uh, UHF modulator a very gentle tweak. You can see there's a tuning coil underneath that label there. And basically what this does is it adjusts the output frequency of the UHF modulator. And our exact problem was the fact that the TV is a modern TV that tunes into specific channels. And what we really needed was the ability to be able to adjust the tuning of that television because it was ever so slightly off. So instead what we did is we adjusted the tuning of the Aztec UHF modulator inside the ZX81 in order to try and compensate for it. So while we've got the wee beastie open we might as well have a quick look for any potential dry joints or any other problems that might be obvious. Nothing obvious seen which is great news. So let's uh, reassemble and plug the wee beastie back in. Wow, there we go. Uh, well, we've definitely got a signal now, but we've got a black screen. So apparently this is quite common, and what it's down to is the fact that the video signals aren't very well emulated by the ZX81, certainly the early versions of it anyway. And in fact, some people have designed some mods in order to try and accommodate for that. So what you can see here is I've just turned the brightness right up on the TV and now we've got, yes, a working ZX81. Print hello. <laughs> yes. Happy days. Sorry if it looks like I've got a vertical sync problem with the television. I don't. To the naked eye, this looks absolutely spot on now. Uh, what it is, is the shutter speed of my camera are creating a harmonic with the refresh rate of the TV screen. So, genuinely, don't worry about that scrolling black bar. Everything works, and I'm a happy, happy chappy. Let's see what some games look like on this thing. So data would normally be uploaded to the Sinclair ZX81 via a cassette recorder. I didn't have a cassette recorder, so I had to scour around on the internet and I made a cable up. And this cable connects directly to the audio output of my computer. And great news, some very kind people created some WAV files of the 1K games. So here we are, bowling, yes. Wii, Nintendo Wii, eat your heart out. This is proper bowling on the ZX81. As always, thanks ever so much for watching. Please don't hesitate to give us a good old thumbs up. Tell your friends, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. You know the score, it's YouTube. Anyway, ZX81, pleased to say it works. And um, that 1K of RAM is really quite limiting. I wonder if I can find a RAM pack for it somewhere. Hmm. Quite a tea. Hmm.